So um, I, I had a request uh, that uh, I should explain more uh, what are we going to do and how are we going to do this. Uh, and I'm happy to do this, uh, but I also like to be flexible in the sense that if you ask me a question uh, that we divert from, from what was planned to do and just, just go and talk about that. Uh, because uh, the things I'm, going, I'm teaching you now is nothing particularly new. Uh, there are lots of books in the library. Anything I tell you, if you think it's, well, that's not true or you don't understand it properly and so on, you can check it in the library. It's, it's all there. And I'm not giving you a formal course in the sense step one, step two, and so on. But I'm trying to tell you a story how all these things uh, which we are uh, concerned with, uh, how they stick together. Uh, and at the moment, uh, we are doing classical mechanics in its very simplest form. Uh, very simple form of classical mechanics. Uh, I will uh, today still do uh, something on the falling body, fa falling bodies, and uh, then uh, I will go over into uh, the harmonic oscillator. Uh, that is the motion of oscillation, and uh, and do that in various forms. I won't want to spend too much time on it, but the harmonic oscillator is an extremely important aspect of physics. It reoccurs in many, many places. Uh, and after that, and that will be tomorrow uh, or so, I will do uh, a three-dimensional problem, see how things change if we do it in three dimensions. We're actually doing everything in one dimension at the moment. And uh, so how, does, how do, do things change if we do it in three dimensions? And uh, as an application there, I will just discuss uh, the, uh, uh, the, solar, the solar system, uh, the movement of planets. And in, in both, uh, particularly when we go to the three dimensions, I will uh, concentrate <coughs> On, uh, on symmetries and, and on conserved quantities. And this is, so, so if I could summarize what I want to do in general with you, there are actually, uh, say, three things, or four. There are four things. I would like to uh, give you a feeling where classical mechanics comes from and what it is like, and most of you know this, but I'm doing it, I think, in a little different way than you have, it has been done before for you. Uh, then I will want to concentrate on conserved quantities, uh, and they have to do with symmetries. When, when is something conserved? Uh, and we have uh, two conserved quantities already, met them. Uh, what are they? Energy and momentum. So these are conserved quantities under certain conditions. And we will get more conserved quantities. And this thinking in terms of conserved quantities uh, is what the talk yesterday evening was about. Uh, the whole idea uh, why there is a, there must be a Higgs boson has to do with this idea that there must be conserved quantities. This is the way you start off with conserved quantities and then you have to do things extra and you predict a Higgs boson and then these guys go and measure it and Maybe they found it, okay? Uh, and so, so the, 
as I was saying, uh, with, even in classical mechanics, I will talk about conserved quantities. And uh, when we are finished with that, I will translate everything we've done to quantum mechanics in a very quick way. I won't teach you all the philosophy of quantum mechanics. It's, it's enormous and it's very interesting and there are lots of books about it and, and people argue about it and uh, it's a fascinating topic. But I'll just put you in the, into the middle of it, transfer you in it and use some of the methods which we have developed in classical mechanics to use it in quantum mechanics. And in terms of the projects, you will actually need uh, quantum mechanics or the concepts of quantum mechanics uh, to, uh, uh, to do photovoltaic uh, uh, energy uh, because it has to, these cells uh, they and your cell phone and your computer and everything works on a quantum mechanics basis. Okay, so so this is this is the the main uh, the main uh, outline of the story, and I'll try to uh, I'll try to uh, keep it uh, just give you briefly an idea where in this broad outline we are at certain times. Uh, is, is, is that okay? Well, that's, does that sound, sound more structured? <coughs> okay, uh, so <coughs> so what, I, uh, uh, what we've done uh, yesterday was uh, consider falling bodies, and uh, let me let me uh, do the very simplest thing we can do, and that is we have uh, we have a force which is just equal to minus m g. So we just let something fall down, and there's no, there's no, we just do that. Uh, so here we can cancel the m's. So we have the simple uh, differential equation dv uh, dt is equal to minus uh, g, and uh, you can all solve that. Uh, what it means then is v is equal to or v minus v zero is equal to minus g t. So I'm taking this dv and I take the t dt over there and I integrate and I assume I start with time t is equal to zero. That's why I just have a t there. Uh, but I start with a general with the velocity v, v zero, and then I get this equation. And so, uh, and you, you have learned this in some way uh, in, in your high school, uh, this, this equation. And, and then uh, we can say, well, this thing is actually equal to uh, dx dt is equal to that. And so I'm going to say, I'm now going to say, okay, that means that dx is equal to v0 minus gt times dt and I'm integrating again and then I get x minus x0 is equal to v0t minus a half g t squared, okay? And uh, this formula you will have learned at school already. I mean, that's a formula you know very well, and this is the way we, uh, we derive it. And now, if you want to, you can go and calculate the energy. The total energy is equal to a half m 
v squared uh, uh, plus uh, plus what? And that is m g x, and we assume x is zero up. Or uh, no, m g x minus l, where we are on the height. No, the potential energy is m g l. Sorry, no, m g x, m g x, and. Uh, yeah. So I can write x is equal to x0 plus that. And then we can put this in there, and then you will find that this is equal to mgx0. Uh, you put, if you put it in here, you put the formula for v in there, and you multiply v squared, and you get everything there. And you put in this formula, you put in here, x is equal to x0, and you get the term with t squared and everything, and you cancel all of this out. Then you get this mgx0, which says that the energy, uh, 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 where I've taken, oh, sorry, I've taken, take, take v0 is equal to 0. So what I, I'm looking for the, for the uh, case where v0 is 0, and I drop it, and then I get this equation, okay? So, uh, but we know all this. You know all the equations, and you know energy conservation, and you can check all these, these things for yourself. And as I, uh, as I indicated, you can now, for any t, uh, for any value of t, you can write down uh, what is the value of x. If I, if I take uh, t is equal to 0, uh, and, v, uh, and v, uh, if I get if t is equal to 0, then I can get the position x, and I get the, the value of, of uh, uh, v, and I plot it. Uh, on, on this diagram of V against X. So any T I take, I put in the position and I plot it. And I do this for next T and the next T and the next T and, and so on, and that's where I got these things, okay? These diagrams. So, so it's these equations uh, where I take different values of T and I, I calculate uh, both x and v, and I plot it here. So that gives me this diagram. Okay. So so this is what we've discussed yesterday, maybe a different uh, uh, in a different way. And this diagram is determined. This this value here is actually determined by the energy which Andre showed us uh, uh, how he, he, he does it. Uh. Okay, so that is, uh, that is a simple thing you all know. Uh, <coughs> and what we will now do is, is add to that a term, add to the force, a term which depends on velocity. Okay? So the, the picture we have is that the, this is our body up there, and it's falling, uh, uh, and, and, and we measure the position in that way, x is up, and this body is falling down, so V goes this way, and, it's, and the force on this body is the gravity uh, 
and it is yeah I, I, I should have shouldn't have said V goes down V we measure upwards but the, at the in fact the V is move is, is going down but the, if we have a positive V uh, the uh, the force uh, the, the, the if the body falls down the uh, the force will go in the that means V is negative and then the force will be up huh? uh, if we shoot this thing up so this is this thing is moving down we have the force of the gravity taking it down and we have the the force of uh, the resistance moving going up and that you will find if you put it in here V is negative so this thing is positive the force is positive is showing up and if, if we're going upwards with this body we can go upwards where we can shoot it up uh, then it is uh, then the uh, the mg still sh shows down and uh, and now this thing will also show down kv will show down if if this body goes up so you see this this force actually actually flips uh, when when uh, uh, it when you f when it uh, the body falls down, the force shows up. If the ob body flow uh, shoots up, the force uh, goes down. No? So, but this is in this sign here included because we have mgv. It's this uh, this is taken care of uh, by the sign of v. Is it clear? Okay. Now, uh, uh, now, 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 the, now that the the next part of this uh, is basically just following these steps. We have a we have a differential equation again, uh, which is just slightly more complicated. Uh, uh, but we can solve it because we can say now m dv uh, and then I take these things over to this side divide by mg plus kv and I take the minus sign out there and that is equal to dt okay and now I, the next step is I need to integrate that. So what, I'll do the easy part and you do the, the difficult part. So what is this? Do you have a problem? Hmm? This speak up. Parlez fortement. So, uh, do you want to do that integral? I'm waiting for someone to do it. Okay, come and do it.
Okay. Uh, everybody happy? Come here. If you don't understand, ask him, no? Hmm? Easy. Yeah, okay. It's difficult to do all these things right while you're there, but uh, I, I, he has a procedure. We could put it into a specific form. Very nice. Okay, somebody said there, it's easy, and I like that. But I also want to, those who think it's not easy, they must also be able to ask questions. Anybody? thinks he doesn't know what we're doing. So, um, I think uh, the, the, the end result of this is that we have a, a form of V is equal to minus M uh, G over K and then plus M G over K plus V zero uh, e to the minus k over m t. So this is this is this this formula changed in this way. And now the next step uh, is to say this is the x dt, and then uh, you can already see uh, that it is extremely easy. Uh, to say uh, x minus x0. Well, well, what I'm doing now is I say dx dt is equal to this. And so we get x is equal, or x minus x0 uh, is equal to, and then we have to integrate this over t dt. Hmm? So I'm taking this dt over there and then I'm integrating over it. And so that is equal to minus mg over k times t. And here if, uh, I get this term plus mg over k plus v0. And if I integrate this I get minus m over k
times minus m over k and then the exponential again and uh, we have to take the exponential uh, at t and then subtract from it when we take the exponential at zero t is equal to zero and then if I put t is equal to zero one okay so what I just want to say is we have we have solved this differential equation and uh, we again know uh, what is uh, V at various stages and we also at various times if you give me a time I just put it in here and then I have a, I have a value for, for V and at the t same time I put in I put that time in here you give me time is 10 seconds or what put it in 10 there 10 seconds there and I get a point which is a point X and a point T and I I again uh, okay, so I get the point X and a point V. I get the point for a specific T, I get the value for X and I get the value for uh, for V. And so I again start with this uh, with this diagram with V against X and uh, the initial one uh, which which we had uh, looked like this uh, and then like this and but now it will change a little bit uh, because uh, of this uh, uh, this force somebody asked me what it was called actually this is called drag in uh, in physics this is a drag force so uh, we now get that this curve will look like this and then it will hit the it will hit the floor and then it will go up here and it will go like this there's not enough energy to go where it was uh, as you and so and then it will come back this way and it will it will do these things and eventually it will sit there so the the uh, this is this is the the diagram the, the phase diagram uh, for for this particular for this particular case. Now the question is where does this energy go? And uh, or put it differently if I now calculate at any stage E is equal to a half mv squared uh, plus g m g x uh, will I get a constant value and uh, seeing from this diagram it's obvious that I don't and uh, so the question is uh, where do I get what happens to that energy and that energy is something which is lost from the energy which I can use as work you see I can think of this body which I have up here as work because uh, if you go on the beach and you will see 
you will see this sometimes. Uh, the seagulls working. Le la wet travail. They work. <coughs> and what do they do? They 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 collect food for themselves. Now, how do they do it? They uh, pick up a mussel in mool. Pick up one, and they fly up, and they drop it. They're not stupid, you know. <laughs> and they drop it, and it breaks the shell, and they can they can go and eat it. And for that, for them, that is work. Eh? That's that's what we also do when we. We want food, we work. Eh? We work for it. They also work for their food. Eh? That's what they do. And this is their work. Their work is to pick up something and have it up there and drop it. Lasse uh, tombe. Uh, so they let it fall down and it falls on the floor and it breaks and then the, the shell breaks and then they can eat it. Uh, so for them having something up there is work. It's a potential for work. <clears throat> but unfortunately they lose some of their work because of air resistance. I mean they fly high enough so it doesn't matter but ne nevertheless they have to think about this. So what happens is that part of the work, which I will draw like this, a lot of work which you have, is be becoming useful in breaking she the shells. That's when it's useful. That's what they want to apply it to. But part of it is moving away and just... Uh, causing uh, a disturbance in the in the air and causing heat or causing uh, sound or causing all sorts of disturbances in the air and so this is this is what I will call heat uh, in general so heat is not just it's hot it's it's actually work which I cannot use anymore. It is there, uh, but I cannot use it. Uh, this is the work which remains when you calculate a, a half uh, MV. That, that is the work which, which is available to break the shell. So that is, that is a useful part of the work and this is something which in a sense goes waste but the energy is still conserved because what I have to do in order to check where that energy is conserved I have to take into account what was, were the other effects of, uh, of dropping down this, this muscle. Uh, what, what were the, the other effects were that there was work done on the um, on the air. The air starts moving and the air gets warm and, and all sorts of things if you do that often enough. So I have to, if I want to check where the energy is conserved, I must, be, I must sure, be sure that I take both these effects into account. This is the effect which on the ground we will have half mv squared, and g would be uh, the, the uh, would be zero. But this will be uh, on the ground. But this thing I haven't taken into account. And so the way to do that is to go back to the equation and to say there is a part of the force uh, which is uh, which is k times v. 
which does work on, on the air. And I have to calculate this work which is done on the air uh, by the normal way in which I calculate work, which is taking the force times dx. Uh, so if I take the force and multiply it by L, we normally say, or so, by, by the distance over which it acts, then uh, uh, I get this, this expression. Now this expression, I can, as we already have uh, uh, done a few times, uh, I can write as K times V times dx, x is a function of t, so for, for, uh, uh, I can differentiate that with respect to t, and, and so I can, I can integrate this from 0 to t. So this is, this is the amount of uh, work which the seagulls are doing on the, on the air. And uh, if I calculate this then, uh, I get k times, this is v again, uh, v squared uh, dt. And I won't do this now because it's, it's straightforward and messy. Uh, but if you want to calculate this, uh, for the sea seagulls, you can put the V0 equal to 0. You can take this equation and you can square it. And you can integrate it from 0 to T. And then you can add it to this quantity. I mean, this quantity you calculate by, by taking... By, by taking, where did we, uh, V, you square this thing, make V zero, zero, and you take this thing, you square it, put it in there, you, you take this value for X and you put it in there, and you take the value for the work that is done on the, uh, on the air, and then if you calculate that, and, and I, I promise you I have done it, uh, then you get that this energy with which you started. And uh, so I don't think it's useful to go and calculate all these things here on the board. It will take some time. But for those of you who are curious of whether, the, whether it's true what I'm saying, uh, just go and try it. Just do that. Uh, so, so the point now is what we are learning is that if we have, uh, if we have energy, it, it doesn't go, it, it doesn't disappear. If we don't have it in one of its forms in which we were looking at it, it has moved over into another form. And in this case, the movement of the, of the muscle and uh, the uh, heat on, uh, or the uh, disturbance which has been caused uh, in, in, the, in the air. Uh, okay. Um, Now we are still working with uh, uh, with with potentials. So we have the energy. Uh, I'm finished with this now. Uh, and uh, if somebody wants to calculate it uh, numerically or formulating the work and just do it and convince yourself that that energy is not lost. It is, 
in the total energy if we take this plus the integral v squared dt then that quantity is a conserved quantity that is our energy and it's a conserved quantity only part of it is in the in the uh, the muscle other part is, has, has moved over into something else <coughs> uh, I will do, I will do, do a, a similar thing uh, just uh, um, uh, just now uh, for the harmonic oscillator. Uh, so I'm not going to move into, over into the harmonic oscillator, uh, but when, before I do that, I just want to tell you uh, uh, we have this, uh, this equation plus V of X, and we, we just need to think a little bit. Uh, uh, we have said V is MGH or MGX or whatever, uh, but that is just the energy uh, which has to do with the gravity here. Uh, but there are different forms of, uh, of energy, uh, different forms of potential, uh, and uh, one very important one is uh, the harmonic oscillator. And uh, it's... Uh, in that case, uh, the potential V of X as a function of X looks like this. It is uh, a half K X squared. It's a parabola. So this is what V of X is. It's a half K X squared. It comes from uh, a simple linear force uh, where the, when the force is uh, minus k times x. So uh, if you think of Hooke's law or something like that where you have, uh, you shift something from a position of equilibrium then the first term in which you can uh, you, you have to shift it is is a linear term and uh, so uh, the force uh, is equal to uh, minus kx and if you then uh, integ uh, you, you find the differential for uh, for that uh, well this is minus dv uh, dx and then if you integrate that you get you get a half kx squared. And this half kx squared is a potential which you will find over and over in uh, the literature, in classical mechanics and in quantum mechanics, and it's, it's, it's very much an essential potential to actually know, to know what it is like, uh, what happens uh, in the harmonic oscillator. Uh, there are other potentials which uh, are also uh, quite uh, quite often used, and the one is the potential of a box. You have a you have a particle that is moving in a box, so it is it is only attracted in this area from from say minus l to plus l. Uh, it is. It, it, ha it has a certain value of its potential. This I'm drawing v of x as a box, and so the particle moves here, and then it hits the hits the the, uh, the side there, and then it turns back. And so, if you put a particle in a box, it just goes forwards and backwards and so on. And that is a that is also a a model uh, which is uh, being used a lot in, in quantum mechanics um, that, that one just puts a particle in a box. So. And then later on we will also uh, consider uh, in the three-dimensional case where we have uh, 
if, uh, but we can already talk about it in the one-dimensional case, is if you uh, go far away from the Earth or from anybody, uh, then the force uh, the, or the, uh, is not just mg all the time. The force changes. Uh, why does it change? What is that? What uh, the force here is nine point eight newtons. Hmm? If I fly up very high, halfway to the moon, uh, what is the force? Is it still mg? Hmm? What is it? It, it reduces by the one second of, of the force on air. At, uh, yeah. So, so the force actually, the the force actually looks like this. And this, if you if you take the center of of the body that attracts you, the Earth or something, then the force at that point is very very strong, and then it. Well, actually, I shouldn't. If you had a, 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 a localized, now let, let me not start at zero. Let me start here. Uh, then, then the force goes like here, goes like one over, uh, the, the potential goes like one over r. The force goes like one over r squared. Uh, uh, so, so this is also a very, very important uh, force. So this is a potential. Uh, if, uh, v goes like 1 over R. And we will be using that as well, uh, the potential V 1 over R, because it determines the way atoms are put together. It determines the way uh, the solar system is, is working and everything. Yeah? It's, it's determined by such a, such a potential. So I would say if we know these, these cases, uh, then we can easily uh, adapt and, and get any, uh, something uh, in between and, and argue about how things r really happen by just making drawings without really so solving, solving things. So, so uh, I, I would just want to say the harmonic oscillator, which I'm going to treat now, is, is extremely important. Who knows it? Who knows the classical harmonic oscillator? Ibrahim knows it, of course, and you and okay. And the others don't know it. Have you not heard of a potential that looks like this? So so let's do it. Uh, actually, we could take a break now. As I said, we will. Uh, let, let me let me just say something about. Uh, I'm sure most of you who've done physics uh, know know everything I'm doing so far, uh, or most of it. And so uh, uh, maybe you can contribute in some way and tell us uh, what you think about it and so on. But I just want to know for the others whether I'm, uh, I'm doing things too slowly. Could I do things more quickly? Uh, or is it... Uh, I, I, I just want you to understand all these, to know about all these concepts. And uh, I don't want to waste your time, but I just want to get you a feel, uh, know that you know what it's, it's about. Uh, so... Hmm? Is the pace is okay? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, I, I think the harmonic oscillator is, uh, is, is so important that I can't skip it. Uh, I mean, it's the harmonic oscillator is being used in physics over and over. Uh, and 
The reason being that uh, it is relatively easy to work with it. And then uh, you do the first calculation you do with the harmonic oscillator, and then you add other terms to it, and you make it more complicated, and then you have methods of handling that. But that gets very, very technical. But you at least have to know the zeroth order uh, process. What, what is the process we're starting off with? And the harmonic oscillator is, in many cases, exactly that. Uh, <clears throat> so as I, uh, as, I, as I said, the harmonic oscillator uh, is, has a potential like this. It has a force equal to minus kx. So that if a particle uh, sits at a point x, uh, then it is, it, is, uh, it is drawn in, the, in this direction. If it moves that way, it's drawn in this direction through the harmonic oscillator. And then if it goes past uh, to the minus side, it is then drawn into that direction. So the particle is drawn this way, and then it goes over the, the center part, and then it uh, is drawn back, and it stops here, and it goes forwards and backwards like this. Now, uh, the way to formulate this is uh, uh, to, to write down Newton's laws. We can also start with, uh, uh, with the energy and so on, but let's start with Newton's laws. And uh, so we have m x double dot. Do you know what uh, that is, that rotation? Uh, so we have uh, x dot is equal to dx dt, and that is equal to v, uh, not this v, this v. And x double dot is dv dt or d2x dt squared. Okay, so it's a it's a, it's a shorthand for, for for that, and uh, that is equal to minus kx. Uh, and, and so I can bring this over here and divide by m, then I get x double dot uh, minus, ah, uh, plus k over m, uh, x is equal to zero. And that is a very simple differential equation. Okay? And uh, the solution of this, uh, we can, well, let me first do this. We sometimes, for that, we write omega zero squared. Uh, so omega zero is a frequency, is k is the square root of k over m. Okay? And that is zero. And so, any proposals? How do we solve that? Hmm? The what? The K must be positive. Yes, yes. K is a positive quantity. Yeah. That's why I put the minus in front there. Huh? No pay. Oh, he's a mathematician. I can see that. He, he wants to see the domain and the range and all these things. <laughs> but <laughs> K is positive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so how do we solve that? Hmm? Ah, you must know this. I mean, so. So the way I solve it 
If you can't solve it, I'll do it for you. Hmm? We just write down a, uh, a solution. We say x is equal to So, so we say, let's put x is equal to, uh, and, and we, we try this as a, as a solution. And we put it in here, and then we get, we differentiate this twice. Uh, and then we get i omega squared a e to the i omega t. And omega I, I squared is minus, so I get omega squared minus omega zero squared uh, times x is equal to zero, uh, which says that omega is equal to uh, omega zero. And so I have a solution. That is my solution with omega equal to omega zero. Okay? And so it says, it tells me, uh, this thing moves like this. Uh, if we, you can worry now, but this is a complex quantity and, and, and we are, we're doing with physics and in physics things are not complex and so on. And so, so what I can now say is, well, I'll take the real part of this thing as a solution. The real part will be a solution and the imaginary part will be a solution. So I'll take the real part of that and so then I get x is equal to a cos omega t. Okay? And uh, I could have added uh, some phase to it, so some starting position uh, which I could have added here immediately and it wouldn't have changed my differentiation. So that is uh, a, a constant of integration. It acts like a constant of integration which, which I put in here. So I have this thing uh, that moves forwards and backwards and uh, uh, so x changes uh, from uh, there's a value when this is zero and then it goes up and uh, well you all know what uh, uh, what the cos looks like I could have also have taken the sign and so on it, it's, it's like this it's sometimes there and sometimes this side and so on it goes forwards and backwards okay and if I w now want to calculate uh, the energy uh, of this particle moving forwards and backwards. Uh, I just have to, I have everything. I didn't write down explicitly uh, what x dot was. Uh, but I can do so. So if that's my solution, I can say x dot is equal to and what is it then? And it's it's a minus, huh? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so So this is the way we calculate the energy. This was the force which leads to a potential. A v is equal to a half kx squared. Sorry, I missed the half. So it's, uh, that is the potential. 
Okay? This is the kinetic energy and this is the potential energy. And uh, I put this in here, so I get a half. Uh, I put a, a outside because A squared outside because this thing is squared and that will, I'll get an A squared there and here I also have an A and I get it squared too so the A squared goes outside and the half goes outside so I get A squared over 2 and then M X, X dot squared will give me uh, omega squared omega zero squared, sorry this should be omega zero now omega zero squared uh, sine squared uh, plus, uh, uh, plus k uh, uh, cos squared of that angle and now this thing here uh, is is k over m and I square it and I cancel that k so it becomes a k and so I get here a squared over 2 uh, k times sine squared plus cosine squared which is of course equal to 1 and so my end result is that the the energy is a constant the total energy is this I hope it's right, the half is right, I hope so yeah that's a, that's a, that's the, that's the energy, and so if you see what happens, the energy of the uh, of the harmonic oscillator uh, is determined by two things: by the the the, str the spring constant multiplied by the amplitude. Okay. Now, one of the simplest or, or most obvious applications of a harmonic oscillator uh, is a wave. When you have a, a wave, say of water, you look at the water, the water goes up and down and up and down and so on, and it goes like a harmonic oscillator. And what this A is, is the amplitude of how much does it go up and how much goes, does it go down. And so you can see by this simple thing that, uh, uh, that, that the energy of, uh, of a wave is actually determined by the square of the height of, of, of the oscillation. This is, uh, uh, this is uh, the way uh, uh, it works. And then by some constant which determines, which has to do with the material, the water, how does, how does it react if it's being taken up and so on. So, so there's some constant there which you still have to worry. But if you compare two waves, and the one has, has just a little height, and the other one a bigger height, then the difference in energy in these two waves is, is a square, is the square of the, of the differences. Yeah? The what? Well then, then what you do is uh, you have to do take a superposition of many waves. You see, th this is a simple model of uh, having one wave. That and and also uh, I must be if you go a little more into the waves of uh, of water, uh, it is not just up and down there is a little, actually a bit of a circular movement. The, the water, uh, when it goes down, it goes this side, and then it, go, uh, and then it comes up this side, you know, and so on. But a wave is not, the energy of the wave is not the movement of the wave. 
It's not that the wave is moving. That's not the energy in the wave. The energy in the wave is the move movement up and down. It's like, it's like a Mexican wave. Are you all keen on football, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's like a, maxim, maxim, uh, uh, a Mexican wave. Uh, in the Mexica, Mexican wave, the people don't run around the, the, the core. They just stand up and sit, and stand up and sit, but they do it in a coordinated way, yeah? And that gives the effect of a wave. Yeah? And the water does basically the same. Uh, it doesn't stand up quite straight and sit straight. It sort of stands up a little skewed and then it turns around and it is like that, you know? This is the way the water wave really works. Uh, but that's more, that, that's, that's more detail. Uh, the main th idea about a wave is that it is an amplitude uh, which you have to determine and then you have to square that and that gives you the energy content of that wave and as Emil uh, said if, it's, uh, if there are many uh, waves all working together you have to, to add them up you have to take and you, the, the way one adds these things up is, can be quite technical. They wouldn't, they can interfere also. So, so it's not just taking the one wave and, and adding it to the other wave and so on. You actually have to calculate this whole superposition of all the waves. But that, and then you need Fourier and analysis and, and lots of things uh, uh, to do that. Uh, but. We're looking at the most simple case of a wave. Okay. So let, let us think about this wave. Uh, and if you give me an energy, and I plot here x and x dot, uh, then this thing, I start, say, uh, with, with x here. I start, I have, a, I have my little child and I, I take it on the swing and I hold it here and I swing it. Okay, this is the way where the place I start. And then that is here. Uh, X is at a certain height, but it's still stationary. And now you swing it. And then X reduces, uh, but the speed increases. X dot increases. And so you get a thing like that. So the, the, uh, the swing goes through the, through the lower part with x is equal to zero more and more quickly and then it starts going slower again and it goes up here. And that is this, uh, this point and there it turns around and it does the next swing on the, on, on the, in the opposite direction. And uh, so this is, this is the diagram uh, uh, for the phase diagram for a simple harmonic oscillator. And any simple harmonic oscillator has this diagram. Exact, this is the thing that describes it. If you see that, you see, oh, it's a harmonic oscillator. Okay? Uh, the energy determines uh, the, the, the uh, radius of this thing determined by the energy. So if you, if you have less energy, you didn't pick, it, uh, pick your sister up uh, high enough, then she will do this, this sort of uh, uh, swing. And another one will do this sort of swing. But they'll all be 
depending on how you choose these scales, uh, they will be uh, ellipses or circles, but they will they will all go around like that. No? And uh, <coughs> so that's the that's the phase diagram. Okay. <coughs> Now, are there any questions about this? I assume you all understand everything, so that's good, it's great. <clears throat> So, so now let's let's go one step further, and we say uh, this harmonic oscillator, like with the swing, you've taken your sister up to this level, and you push, and uh, it's swinging, but after a time it stops swinging. <clears throat> so there is energy loss. So if we look at it, uh, if we look at, at it on that diagram, uh, what is actually happening uh, is you have started here, and uh, then you didn't keep onto this line exactly, and by the time you are around here, you actually lost so much energy you're on this line now and then you stop and then you go on on this line and so on and eventually you stop here so this is this is the the picture of the uh, uh, of the case which I want to describe now in, in uh, which we call a damped harmonic oscillator. Uh, so, so damping uh, means, in our language now, means, means losing energy. We're losing energy somehow, but we are comf I hope we start to get comfortable with the idea that we lose energy because we are actually putting it somewhere. We're giving it uh, to, the, to the bolts in the swing or somewhere and, and they get hot after a while or something, but some, the energy goes somewhere, as we have seen in the previous example. Uh, so, uh, how do we do the damped harmonic oscillator? Well, very much the same way as we did this one. So the, the damping uh, causes the uh, the damping force. So this is an additional force. Remember, all of this is the force. The force acts against the movement. It wants to stop the movement. So that's why it's it's a minus. And B is in the domain of, of, of positive quantity. So who was asking about that? Uh, <laughs> so B is a positive quantity, and K is, a, K is also a positive quantity. <clears throat> uh, so we can, we can do this now. Uh, should I divide this by M immediately?
And this we called omega zero squared, and so let's stick to it. Uh, times x, uh, and this thing we will call uh, gamma times x dot equal to zero. Okay, now, now we want to solve this equation. Well, that's easy, uh, of course. Who wants to do it? You do it. Use the method which we used. Just change it. Okay, I think it's right. I haven't checked it, but there's so, good, so many guys checking around here, so if you made a mistake, somebody would have called you out. What's your name? Hey. Hmm? Gael. Gael. Yeah. Where are you from? Congo Brazzaville. Congo Brazzaville. Okay. Thank you much, Gael. Um, so, um, let, let's just, just look at uh, one point here. Uh, it's, it's totally correct what he's done, as far as I can see. Uh, hmm? Oh, one of them is a minus here. No, it's correct. He's put the minus in front. And here he's... Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, this is this is one one way one would like to present the uh, the equation. Uh, particularly, you would like to present it this way uh, when when gamma is uh, uh, is very large, and uh, and that uh, we call. Uh, over over damped solution that is the solution when uh, if if uh, gamma is very large then the thing would ju just go down and stop there huh? uh, the the other one which if you've built the swing a little better and put some oil on it and so on uh, then this gamma is hopefully fairly small because you want to you want to uh, uh, 
three. So then what we could do is we could uh, uh, write it as a times e to the minus uh, uh, gamma t and then uh, I'll take this out. Uh, oh well. No, I can't take it out at the moment. The a. Uh, so so uh, th then we, and then we we have here, i to. Uh, Uh, I'll put this 2 in there, there's a 2 here, and uh, I get omega 0 uh, squared minus uh, gamma over 4 in here, and uh, times t, and then this b term, and which also has an e to the minus i gamma in front of it, and so I try to put a and b together, and that I can do, which you can easily see, by making this a to the i phi and this uh, b. Uh, so, so I put in the cos and the sin, basically, for a and b. And then you can uh, rewrite that. And then you get, it is a to the uh, e to the minus gamma t over 2 uh, cos omega zero uh, omega zero uh, squared minus gamma uh, minus gamma over two uh, times t plus this phi I was talking about uh, some phase okay so you can try try to do that yourself if you, you cannot do that but it's it's just a different way uh, so so what we want to see here is that we still retain this harmonic oscillator here. It's still oscillating like it did up there with a, with a cos uh, of uh, some uh, angle. Uh, this frequency has changed a little bit. It's not omega zero squared. It's, it's just changed a little bit due to this gamma. Uh, and uh, uh, and it is damped. This we call damped. Uh, as t increases, this thing, which w which I want to call the amplitude, uh, is decreasing all the time. So if I calculate uh, the energy now uh, with this with this thing, uh, yeah. You're a physicist. Yeah. Yeah. I really hate seeing people doing what I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I just want to ask a question. Yes, that's good. Uh, <laughs> I like your introduction. <laughs> yeah. From here to here, there's no problem. Yes. What's the connection of being and that? Uh, no. He uses, I don't know what, uh, the, the connection is this, uh, that he says x is equal to, and, and I, do, I, do, I can't read his writing, uh, but so, so, so let, me, let me change it and make this an omega here, and that, uh, that also an, an omega. Yes, yeah. And, and so I, uh, so what I, what he's doing is he's, uh, he, he says this is equal to A times uh, omega T. That is the solution to this equation. Under the condition that omega satisfies this equation. Because what he's doing is taking this equation and he's differentiating it twice and he gets omega squared a e to the omega t and then he uh, 
he differentiates it once there. And so then he has, as this equation must be satisfied, A times this times the e to the, I, uh, to the omega t must satisfy this equation. And so he, he then solves for, for this value, this unknown with which he just started off with. And that is what he's doing here. Is it okay? Yeah, but no, it's good. It's good. Uh, uh, he he did a quick one because he knows this very well. Uh, <laughs> he knew how it was running. Yeah? So and you uh, you you want to see how every step is, and that's why we are here to do that. Uh, Ibram, you wanted to ask. Me. Yes. And he starts to solve this equation for R as a quadratic equation. And uh, he That's uses right. R2 as a solution to a quadratic equation, which for which he uh, integrates and gets the solution, not backward. Not he, he didn't start from the solution and uh, to substitute in the equation. Well, that is a way of thinking. Is, is that what you think? You work with operators there? Uh, uh, I, I think that is a that is a, a a formal way of I know what you're talking about, uh, but I don't think it's the right way to present it here. I think you must you must rather say uh, let's in the way I did the first one. Let's say uh, the yeah. Yes, but I'm, I'm ending up with this, same, uh, with this same equation. I'm ending up with this same equation, which I then solve for, for omega, yeah? Is it supposed to be minus omega squared or omega squared? Uh, sorry, would you come here? Uh, uh, it's a, where, where is it? Here. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You do it, Gail, you did it well, but you did it too quickly. <laughs> you see? Yeah, she, she's right. Uh, because, no, no, you're not right. <laughs> Uh, uh, he didn't put in, when he did that, he didn't put in an I in here. You know, I put in an I in there because I expected that to happen. But it's not necessary to put the I. So his omega, and maybe I shouldn't have written omega again, uh, but his omega is, uh, uh, has not got the I. And so if he differentiates this uh, twice, he just gets omega squared. Huh? Okay. Okay. Uh, Ibram has a as a as a way of doing things which is actually quite good for the mathematicians, uh, but I think for the uh, the, the formal mathematicians. Uh, I, I think for the more practical minded, uh, I would prefer to do it this way, uh, to, to just, just keep it this way. <clears throat> okay, uh, so uh, where was I? Uh, I, I, was, I was at this point uh, where we, I, I, I didn't do this very clearly, but maybe if you can't do it, you can, you can ask me and then we can do it again. Uh, how to get from this equation to, to this equation. And the, the, the idea is that you, you take this A and you make, and you make, uh, and B and you give, you consider that to be one quantity with a phase. 
and and so uh, and then you you get this phase in here. You see, if you if you have x and y, you can write it as r to the i theta. Uh, so you have uh, uh, you, you have you you can write it as one constant with a phase. Huh? And this is what I've did uh, did here. Uh, one can do that more slowly, but I'm sure you can you can manage that uh, yourself. Uh, now the the uh, the thing uh, uh, we still need to do here uh, is to calculate the energy. Now this is we've already done that for for the no, uh, normal harmonic oscillator, and now this solution looks very much the same as the. Uh, uh, it's still a cause and it's just shifted a little bit here and, and otherwise it's very much the same but it has a different amplitude and the amplitude is this thing and we now already know what the energy will be and you can check it for yourself if you don't trust me uh, it will be a squared and it will be e to the minus gamma t so I will have to square this thing also because this is, it is a reducing amplitude uh, of, of the harmonic oscillator. And then if I put it into the energy, then it, it reduces. So, so the, the, uh, the way this harmonic oscillator looks, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, well, I can, I can, uh, uh, plot x say up here and t here and uh, depending on where I start I started up here uh, and then the thing goes down and it goes down and it goes like this so it is it is damped it's subsequent um, uh, oscillations are smaller and smaller and smaller as we go and this is uh, uh, goes like e to the m minus gamma t and this is the the oscillation <coughs> uh, while beforehand uh, we had an undamped uh, equation which was more or less going if gamma is not too big was going uh, a similar, uh, it was just a little bit out of phase, but the main thing is it was always kind of returning to the, to the same value. So this was not damped. That was the init initial harmonic oscillator. So this harmonic oscillator has the property of losing energy. And uh, now, uh, on the other hand, uh, if your little sister wants to be kept, be swinging, continue to swing, uh, you have to put in energy huh? uh, to make up for the loss. And uh, so how do we do that? Uh, pusher, yeah. You push her. So, but I want to write that in mathematics with art operators, <laughs> which say push. <laughs> uh, so, so, so how do I, how do I push her? I can do what we did eventually, initially, uh, with. Uh, with with this little time dependent uh, force, uh, we, if you remember, we started off with the force f of t, and then uh, we integrated over a short time, and we and they, by that we changed the momentum. So this force f of t is a typical force to change the momentum. And while we change the momentum, if we increase it, for instance, then we, um, uh, then we increase the energy. So we, we impart 
uh, momentum into the system and, and by it we impart uh, energy into the system. And so we can do this again for the harmonic oscillator. And uh, the simplest way of doing it, I mean there are many ways you could think of doing that, but the simplest way is not by just pushing once or so on, but by pushing continuously. Sort of uh, running under the swing and sphere and then, and then running back and so on, and imparting the, the, uh, the change of momentum or the, the energy in a continuous way. And that you would express uh, in, in mathematical terms uh, by, uh, by uh, adding another term uh, to our uh, to our force which is just uh, say F0 some value of F times sine sine omega t. Um, so uh, that means I, as time changes I will, I will uh, add energy to the system or I, I'll, I'll add I'll force onto the system and what we will see now is that if we solve that equation then the uh, then the uh, swing will keep on swinging, uh, but in a very specific way. And uh, this is what uh, we need to solve now. And let me just set up the equation, and then uh, we do it next time, because I don't want to break it in the middle. Well, actually, I, I used cosine. It doesn't really matter. Uh, cosine omega t. So uh, all we need to do is at this stage here, we need to add a force which is time dependent. And we could, it could have some phase if we wanted to, something like that. And, uh, and this equation uh, follows very much the same way in which we, we have done uh, so far. Uh, you can follow it basically step by step, but there's something different. Uh, what's different between this equation and the, and the equations we had so far? I'm asking a question and I'm waiting for someone to answer it. Purely mathematically, what, what is different between uh, this equation as I have it and the one without this. It's, they, they are treated differently mathematically. So, I need your wisdom. I want to solve that. Hmm? I mean, it's, it's, it's not just another term. It's another structure. So what is the other structure? Can I just do the same as we did before, right? X is equal to E to the uh, I omega T or IE to, to, and put it in there and then, uh, then get the solution. Or do I have to do, uh, do I have to rethink the solution of the, 
differential equation. Hmm? Huh? The first one OX only it is equated to zero. This one you see see how the other part is Yes, uh, the, this equation, first of all, we can solve this one by finding the complementary solution. And uh, then we have to be careful when we come for the right hand side for choosing our particular solution. So that term would really guide us in terms of how we should choose the particular solution, in, also in regard to what we got in the complementary solution. Where are you from? From Lesotho. The sort of. Uh, he, he's done it, he said it correctly. Did you understand what he said? Hmm? We cannot just go and put a solution in there and try and solve it. We have to look at, this is not a homogeneous differential any equation anymore. It has an inhomogeneous term. A term which does not depend on x. Uh, it is sitting there uh, irrespective of what happens to x, what the value of x is. And so the way to solve such an equation is to do it in two steps. And it goes in English by the name of uh, uh, the comp you find the complementary uh, the complementary solution, no? uh, which is actually the solution of the part where we put this equal to zero, because that solution, if you put it in here, it will be zero. It uh, it it will s it will solve the equation because uh, it will not yield this term. This term will still not be there. But the rest of the equation will be solved by the complementary uh, uh, solution. But in order to yield this term here, you have to uh, add something, which in English, I don't know what it's called in French, but in English uh, it's called the particular integral. Uh, <coughs> and. Uh, so this is a different way of do looking at, or, or the next step in, in working with the, uh, differential equations. You, look, you break it up into two parts, the complementary solution and the particular integral. En français, what is it in French? Hmm? Solution particulière. Oui. <laughs> And the complementary complement. Okay. Okay. So it's a nice. So it's a so it's a nice a nice place to break. Uh, I I think we've done most of the problem uh, of solving this uh, this equation by actually already getting the complementary uh, solutions and we only need to determine the particular integral and then we can calculate that. And if we have the particular integral we have the full solution and then uh, we will see that this term actually feeds in energy. <coughs> So we can get a solution which, which is stable again, which has a constant energy, uh, which stays on one of these big lines. But, uh, but this, this term feeds in energy and this term takes out energy. Okay? So, so this is a nice balance of, of, of these two things. I'll do this next time.